What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you caught my recent Twitter post or my teaser unboxing on awesome hardware, you may have noticed that I got my hands on the new 2016 Razer Blade Pro, an absolute menace of a laptop irresponsibly fitted with a quad-core Intel Core i7-6700HQ hyper-threaded Skylake processor and a full GTX 1080 GPU from Nvidia. This thing can easily crush most gaming desktops out there. But, as you might expect, cramming all that power in such a slim package comes at a price. With the specs you see here, which includes 32 gigs of DDR4 and a pair of 256 gig M.2 PCIe SSDs in RAID 0, the MSRP of this model is just a few hundos shy of $4,000 US. And I'll be the first to acknowledge that much faster desktop PCs can be built for cheaper. This is true. But when you understand the spatial and thermal challenges of stuffing this and much more into a slab less than an inch thick, the hefty premium seems a bit more justified, especially when the finished product performs as well as it does, as we'll see later on. The Blade Pro measures just 0.9 inches thick and weighs in at 7.8 pounds, which isn't half bad for a notebook this size. The 17.3 inch IGZO touch display sports a 4K resolution with support for NVIDIA G-Sync at 60 Hertz and 100% Adobe RGB delivering crispy text and vivid imagery for gamers and content creators alike. Two subjective minor gripes here are the highly reflective gloss screen and the thick bezels found on other Blade systems. The 1920 by 1080 2 megapixel webcam is a welcome feature for on the Ghost streamers that delivers sharp images assuming you have ample ambient lighting. Razer also introduces their ultra low profile mechanical keyboard with this model, the first of its kind with anti-ghosting capabilities and individually backlit keys configurable in their own Synapse software. While the keys look great when illuminated, Functionally, they're not my favorite to type on. The sharp tactile click is on the stiff side, and combining that with short travel and a 65 gram actuation force left me with frequently missed keystrokes. On the other hand, the way the keys feel and respond while gaming is gosh darn satisfying. Once I fired up Doom for the first time, it was like a light bulb went off, and everything I loathed about the keys became all the things I loved about them. Turns out you just have to be pumping lead into the face of Hellspawn demons in order to appreciate the stiff clickiness of these switches. On a side note, the keys also emit this weird, crispy, sizzling sound, which will likely be a love or hate affair. Now, one revision I hoped to find was backlight illumination for the key's secondary functions. There are plenty of useful functions assigned to the F key, so it's just a shame that their secondary icons still don't light up. On the right side of the device, you'll find a handy volume scroll wheel with lighting strips, dedicated multimedia keys, and a large multi-point touchpad with chroma trim lighting around the edges. The pad feels smooth but sturdy and tracks quite well. From a functional standpoint, I'm still on the fence about shifting the touchpad to the right side of the keys. While it does help prevent accidental cursor movement when typing, I do miss being able to track with my thumbs without having to lift one of my hands off the keyboard. Connectivity options include an SD card reader, Thunderbolt 3 via USB Type-C, three USB 3 ports, full-size HDMI 2.0 out, a combo 3.5mm jack, RJ45, and AC power. On the sides, you'll also find grills covering the stereo speakers, which sound surprisingly good for a laptop. And there's a Kensington lock, which you should definitely use, because I will try to steal this from you. Powering the unit from the wall is a 250-watt power brick that maintains an impressive slim profile for easy travel. Without the AC adapter, battery life lasted two and a half hours with light tasks and a bit of gaming at 80% screen brightness. It's not the best by any stretch, but considering the display and hardware we're driving, it ain't that bad either. Just make sure you don't leave your brick behind if you plan on gaming or you'll be SOL. Speaking of gaming, that's what we're really here to talk about, isn't it? And why not? This is where the Blade Pro shines best, flexing its hardware muscles. In-game, the CPU turbos to 3.5 GHz while the core clock of our GTX 1080 hits a max of 1835 MHz, well above the Founders Edition's rated boost clock of 1733 MHz. Being pressed for time, I only ran two heavy-hitting benchmarks, but their results give us a clear picture of the machine's capabilities. In Doom at Ultra settings, we saw 121 FPS on average at 1080p, with 1% lows of 67 and 0.1% lows of 54. Scaling up to 4K yielded an average FPS of 52, with 41 and 39 representing our 1% and 0.1% lows respectively, a tight grouping that hints at visible fluidity, and indeed this was the case. 
Favorable results continue in GTA 5 at 1080p with an average FPS of 91, a 1% low of 70, and 0.1% low of 63. At 4K, we churn out over 60 FPS on average with 1% lows of 48 and 0.1s of 43, resulting in some light choppiness, but an overall enjoyable ride. This is a standout victory, as 4K gaming laptops fitted with hardware fast enough to push that many pixels are few and far between. G-Sync is the cherry on top of all this, with its tear-free, buttery smoothness bringing the Blade Pro closer to a premium desktop gaming experience than any other notebook I've personally tested. As you might expect, the two potential trade-offs for such a feat are acoustics and thermals. Be warned, the laptop does get loud, so you'll want to plug in your headphones and crank up the volume to avoid the tumultuous storm of fan noise. This also means you probably can't play AAA games in the classroom without drawing attention to the fact that you aren't paying any. With an ambient temperature of 24 degrees C, the GTX 1080 actually stayed cooler than I anticipated with a max temp of 77 C, a testament to Razer's internal fans and vapor chamber design. Turns out it was the CPU that got toasty in our tests, reaching 90 C on the package. While this is still under Intel's critical temp limit, picking up a laptop cooler may not be a bad idea, especially if that leads to a cooler chassis. The aluminum body of the Blade Pro is a wicked heat conductor, and I found the palm rest a bit too warm for my liking after the half hour mark under load. If this was my personal laptop, I would invest in a slim wrist rest to shield the heat for lengthy gaming sessions. To sum up, the Blade Pro is a friggin' masterpiece, albeit an expensive one. You may think that being able to tote around a thin slice of 4K gaming holiness on your back comes with a laundry list of technical caveats, but the compromises are few and well worth the payoff, offering a battlefield experience that isn't just good for a laptop, it's exceptional, period. If your wallet supports four-way SLI and you don't mind the stiffer key switches for typing, this is the ultimate on-the-go battle station that will satisfy even the highest ranks of the PC gaming elite. But that's gonna do it for now, guys, so let me know what you think of this thing in the comments below, and don't forget to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also support the channel by checking out my store and picking up some bona fide Bitwit merch. As always, I'm Kyle Bitwit. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see y'all in the next video.